after we got over our paranoia, we are finally embracing Notion. If you've not seen the video, do make sure you watch the video on things you should worry about if you decide to use Notion for your note taking. Proceed with caution. Hey guys, it's Ropsy back with Paperless X, a channel that is all about digital productivity. If you're new here, hello. Make sure you subscribe if you're looking for a solution to go paperless with your work, studies, or business. And if you're already subscribed, fantastic human, welcome back. Make sure you turn on your notifications so you know each time we release a new video. Notion is a free web-based note-taking app with some premium packages. It requires an internet connection to work. If you wanted to use it offline, you can only access one page at a time by leaving it open until you are connected to the internet again. The free version is a fully functional app and that is what we'll be focusing on in this video. This is the Mac version of Notion. This video is going to cover understanding organization, in Notion, all the things that you can add in Notion, and basically how you navigate through the application. Navigating through Notion can be quite overwhelming. Notion comes with a lot of templates. It's an app designed for personal, professional, and corporate use. This video is going to cover the basics, introducing you to the capabilities of Notion. How you choose to use it will depend on your needs. You can start using Notion with any of these templates. Most of them won't make any sense though when you don't understand the building blocks in the application. You can either create a page or a database in Notion. A page is much simpler than a database. Databases create a solid foundation for better organization in the app. Notion is the perfect application if you struggle with organization in general. Notion can take away all those organization complications and sort everything for you as you create your notes in the app. For my French notes, my default database is a table. This was the best way to organize my notes in a way that I understand, but it doesn't matter how you create your notes in Notion. All the views are applicable to your notes. Simply add all the views and you can switch between them depending on your mood. If you want to see your calendar for the reminders in your database, you can switch to the calendar view. And I can see that on the 11th and 13th, I have reminders to review some notes. Suppose you're looking for something you created but can't remember the topic. You have a rough idea on what they look like or what they're about. You can switch to the gallery view, which gives you a preview of what your notes pages contain. If your notes contain tables, however, those don't show in your gallery view thumbnail. If you have photos in your notes, they'll look great with the gallery database. For easier navigation through your views, you can use this sidebar. All the view options you add to your database are available under your notes. For a clean and minimalist presentation of your notes in your database, you can use lists. You can decide which properties you want to show on each database as you navigate through your notes. You can choose to show everything or show no properties at all. Your board will give you the ability to organize your notes according to certain properties that you add to your notes. In this case, my notes are grouped according to the tags that are used when creating them. You can then decide how much information your cards show. Do you want the page titles only or page covers? As you can see, I am a boring human being. I don't really put covers on my pages, so yeah. You can add page content again. Your tables do not show in this view. Your board is basically an organized version of your gallery view. You can make your cards small, medium, or large. If they contain images, you can fit images. So you can see the whole image, not just a section of the image or a zoomed version of the image. You can also filter and sort what you see. We'll cover that in a separate video because that's not really basic. That's a bit complex. Notion has put a lot of effort into making sure whatever you create, you can find it as easily if you understand how to navigate the application. To get started, we'll create a page and call it Paperless X Review. The first thing you create in Notion is always a page. You can then turn that page into a database by tapping one of these databases that we just discussed. If you start writing here at the top, you have essentially created a page. We will create a table database. You can add an icon for your database from your emojis, upload an image, or get one from a link. Your icon appears on the sidebar here. It makes your notes easier to identify, especially if you're a visual person. A picture is worth a thousand words. Having these icons for your titles is very useful. You can then add a cover for your database from the apps gallery. 
upload your own, use a link, or get one from Unsplash. Because this is a free version, every upload you make in Notion is limited to 5 megabytes. You can also add a description to your database. Descriptions are only available for your databases and not your pages. And that is one of the few ways you can tell the two apart. For my French database, these are all the pages that are in my French notes. And this effectively works as the contents page to my database. Each database has what Notion calls properties. These are a way to organize your notes. In this case, I have my topics on the first column. You can rename these columns. The second column is tags. My notes consist of grammar and vocabulary. It helps me decide what I want to go through if I want to go through grammar or vocabulary for that revision session. The third column, I put dates for when I plan to review the notes. I've already set reminders for some notes. Your properties in Notion could be text, numbers, selection options, multiple select options, date, people, files, media, checkboxes, URLs, emails, and phone numbers. The possible combinations you can create in Notion are endless. If we went through all of them, we would never finish this video. But they really depend on what you're trying to create in your notes. The kind of database you're trying to create will determine which properties you add to your database. We will create a page and name it text tool. Then we will add some tags and rename this column rating. Our tags are ratings starting from a star to five stars. We don't have any files to attach, so I'm going to delete that column. Then open our page to explore the text tool in Notion. You can work on your page like this as a superimposed window above your workspace, or you can open it as a separate window on its own. For all your pages in Notion, you can add an icon and a cover. My page title is here and my properties, which are the rating, is below it. Notion's properties for a database are consistent. This is very important to avoid any confusion, and it means that you can change these properties from almost anywhere within the application. For example, for this page, I can put my rating here on this page, or I can go back to my default database view to put my rating. Likewise, if you decide to add a property to your database, you can do it here, and it is added to all the pages in your database. And you can see it when you go back to your database view. Your font in Notion is customized per page. You only have three options to choose from. For an application that is solely dedicated to typing your notes, this is very disappointing. But others could look at it as minimalism. It keeps your notes uniform in all the notes you create on that page. The options available work though. The default font looks great, but if you like playing around with fonts, Notion is definitely not the app you want to go for. Your text can either be big or small, again, not a wide variety and not a lot of flexibility. You can make the page full width, which adds a few centimeters to your page, and that could mean a lot to someone. Notion has a minimalist user interface. There is no writing icons anywhere on the canvas. Everything you need pops up when you need it. This has both advantages and disadvantages. Of course, the clean writing space is refreshing. It allows you to focus without any distractions. But icons in the workspace would make functions readily available to simply tap on. To add anything to the application, you have to rely on this plus icon and scroll to find what you need. Or you have to write commands, which require learning. You need to know the different blocks that Notion offers for you to use commands. Why not just have icons that we can tap on? The pop-up menus are not fun to work with. Notion works with blocks. They can be anything you need, really. Headings, subheadings, interactive checklists, lists, toggle lists, code, codes, callouts, or equations. Or they can just be plain text. Notion has three heading options, H1 to H3. You can add subpages to your notes. Tapping on a subpage will open that page as a full page to work on. The new page can be a simple page or another database. You can thus have databases within databases in Notion and pages within pages, which offers you an infinite number of organizational levels. The more organizational levels you have in a note-taking application, the better, and Notion has that covered. Another thing to note, all your databases can be added to your page as sections, your tables, your gallery as part of a page. 
You can add interactive checklists in Notion. The application checks off, dims, and strikes out your completed tasks, all the necessary features you need for a great checklist feature. You can add bullet points. The application only allows you to move one hierarchy below the previous bullet. It really does make sense, but it's a bit limiting. Numbered lists work best when you change the numbering for every hierarchy you add to your notes. We can get over similar bullet points, but numbering, that is unacceptable for such a sophisticated application. You want your numbers to have different types and be different kinds for you to differentiate your lists and sublists when you're creating lists in your notes. Toggle lists are amazing. The best way to create notes, we find, is to have the ability to see the bigger picture first, then dive deeper for details. Notion might not be a mind mapping app, but its approach to note taking is based on building connections between ideas, just like a mind map does. That makes it an amazing application. Toggle lists can be amazing for students, great for revision if you have questions as toggle topics and your answers tucked away. This can be a really good way to test your knowledge and your understanding of different topics. If you're a professional, maybe you prefer summaries and details of your notes tucked away. This feature works for that as well. You can add codes to your notes. You can divide your blocks, add a division between your notes. You can hyperlink to other pages. Hyperlinks in a note-taking application are very important. They connect information in your notes and make it easier to navigate through them. After reading this summary on the perfect tense, I can easily delve deeper into the perfect tense and go back to my summary just as easily. The hours of my life I have wasted flipping through pages of my notes and textbooks, only God knows. And hyperlinks just save you the hassle of flipping through information. You can make information stand out from your notes using the call out box. Naturalement, you can change the icon. And this is a very subtle way to make information pop out. You can change the color of your text and even the background. The color options in Notion are terrible. They are not intense enough except for red and black. Green looks like blue. Am I the only one? I thought would compare the same colors from Microsoft Word. These colors need to be improved or at least Notion should let us pick our own colors because the colors in Notion, they are too dull and they look worse on smaller text. You can add dates to your notes and even set reminders in Notion. If you need to set reminders, you can choose to be reminded at the time of the event, a few minutes, hours, or even days before the event. Notion's reminders are very basic. You can't use them for any sophisticated planning. So if you're looking for a planning application, Notion is not it. The reminders feature in Notion doesn't have the option to repeat tasks. And that's really a very basic feature to have for a planning application. You can edit your blocks very easily. Tap on the dots to delete or duplicate that block. You can also copy sections of your notes and paste in other applications. You can copy the link to that block or move the block to another database or a specific page in your notes. That's a lot of flexibility and it's pretty impressive. You can comment on that block or change the color for your block. You can also edit the text in your blocks. This pop-up menu appears the moment you select a word or a couple of words. You can change the block type, comment on the section. Comments are useful ways to bookmark items you want to go back to because then it creates this comment icon that you easily recognize when you open your notes. You can make your text bold, italic, underline, or strike out. You can add links to your selections. You can add equations in your sentence, change text color, and highlight. You can mention a person, a page, or a date. And Notion supports really complex math equations. When you create a table database in your notes, you can't remove the first column. And the first column is the one that has your topic. And the first column is the one that hyperlinks to other pages in your table. And it's not every time when you need that column in tables. Notion should add the ability to just add simple tables in the application that are not necessarily database tables. 
So what I've done to avoid creating sub pages within my notes is I just don't use the first column when I'm creating my notes. And that's not very ideal. It works, but I would rather just have a table that does not have the first column or have the ability to delete the first column. You can upload images in your notes. You are limited to five megabytes per upload for your image and you can comment and add captions to your photos. Your blog can move around and can be adjusted. You can do this with any blog really in Notion, not just your photos. You can arrange how your information looks on the page. You can play around with how you present your information on the page. Notion supports videos. We are always out looking for note-taking applications that support videos and Notion does. You can embed videos from different online sources, YouTube for example, and you can also upload your own videos. Your video has similar options to the ones you get for your notes you can add audio files it would be cooler if you could audio record within the application but i suppose recording audio in another application and bringing it to notion makes more sense to them you can capture code snippets and bookmark websites in your notes you can add or embed pdfs to your notes when a pdf is embedded you can read it within your notes just read it you can't annotate it at all you can look up terms from google using google the PDF files you add to Notion will open in your browser when you do want to open them. You can embed a lot of things into Notion from Google, Twitter, Figma, Abstract, Envision. You can import information from a lot of places. If you've created it in another application, what is the purpose of bringing it here into Notion? You can collaborate on your pages in Notion when you're using this free plan. You can't collaborate on an entire workspace though. Collaboration is awesome, especially with all the remote work that we're doing lately. A must have for note taking apps. You can decide what permissions you give your guests that you invite to your notes. You can also publish a page online to share with people that don't use Notion. Very thoughtful. You can view the changes you've made to your notes over time since you started creating the notes. On the free version, however, you can't restore the previous versions of your notes. You can only see them. You can mark the page as your favorite. The only frustrating thing about Notion is the inability to export your notes in an end user friendly format. Notion does not export sub pages of your notes. It only exports the first page of your database with links that take you back to Notion. Unless you pay for the enterprise plan, which costs $20 a month for every member in your organization, you can't have a full version of the notes you create in Notion. This, plus the fact that the application prefers to keep my notes on their servers, is the reason why I don't use Notion. It's the reason you shouldn't use this application for your whole life. They are letting you take notes and putting it on their servers. You can't even keep a copy for yourself on your device. When using Notion, use it only for some aspects of your life. Notion organizes your notes as you create them, so you don't have to worry about organization in the app. You can see the organization level of the page you currently have opened at the top of the application. If you like having more control over your organization, the lack of folders in the application might feel strange at first, but their organization approach is well thought out and it might grow on you. Of course, this works great for you if you really can't organize your notes at all. So if you're having trouble with organization, Notion is definitely the app to consider. In your settings, you can turn on your notifications, you can connect to some apps, you can name your workspace, upload an icon, choose a domain. Though the option to export your whole workspace is available, it's really not possible to export your notes out of the application in a user-friendly, easy-to-read way. HTML and Markdown are just not the most ideal ways to export your notes out of the application. This pretty much covers the basics of Notion. I hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Thank you guys so much for watching. Awesome human being. See you in the next video.